Just a word of housekeeping. We had the carpets cleaned a, a couple of weeks ago, so keep them in good shape, all right, for the next year. And when we put the seats back, we um, kept the wider spaces in the front section, but we had to add more seats. So in the back section, you're flying economy. In the front section, you have extra leg room and Wi-Fi, so enjoy. <laughs> The past two weeks we've been asking, are you preparing for retirement or are you preparing for heaven? We heard two weeks ago the story of the rich fool. Remember the man who had a big harvest in small barns. He says, what shall I do? He says, I know what I'll do. I'll scrape my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store everything up and I can say to myself, rest, eat, drink, and be merry. For you have plenty of goods to last for years to come. But that night God just said to him, you fool. Your, night, your life will be demanded from you this night. Then to whom will these things belong? No, rather than prepare yourself for retirement, you should have been preparing for that night for heaven. And we heard a story last week of the master entrusted his household to his, his servants, his, to his steward, his household manager. And he went on a journey to a wedding. And then when he came back, he found that the, the servants had taken good care of the other servants. And so the master put on an apron and he served the servants. Incredibly, he served the servants. And from that, we took away the, t the two messages to prepare for heaven. Simply take care of others. And second, trust the Lord to take care of of you. Does that sound familiar? Say yes, Father. Yes, Father. And if you need to get caught up, look online. The video is on, online, but that brings us up today. About decisions. The Olympics are full of athletes who have made a decision to prepare for the Olympics, change their lives. And Natalie Coughlin is one of them. She's a 12-time Olympic medalist in swimming. For the past three years, her training schedule has been exactly the same. She's been in the water eight times a week, each time about two hours. And she goes to the gym four times a week. In total, she's in exercising and training 30 hours a week, uh, six days a week. She gets Sundays off. <laughs> it's intense workouts, intense way of life. It affects her diet, her friends, um, everything she does with her time is prepare for the Olympics. It's not just a one-time decision, but it's a decision that changed her life. And it paid off. She's in the Olympics. And recall the story of a reverse tither, Rick Warren, his way of life. He decided 30-something years ago when he got married to set aside 10% of his income he and his wife, in the next year 11%, next year 12%, until to today they give 90% of their income to the church, 90%, they keep 10% for themselves. He sees himself as a portfolio manager. It's not his money he's handling, it's God's, and his responsibility is to invest it into the kingdom of God and keep a little bit for, cut for himself. <laughs> so he's been freed, he says, freed from affluence, freed for influence, being the Billy Graham of our day freed from a life of luxury and freed for life with the Lord, freed from the living the good life to freed to live a life that is truly good. And he's been using that wealth that God has entrusted to him uh, for others, taking care of others. And it all came from that decision. You have to make that decision. To prepare for the Olympics is not just, that doesn't happen by itself to tithe 90% of your income and giving 90% of your income to the church doesn't happen by itself or even giving 10% just doesn't happen. You have to make a decision. And to prepare for heaven, you have to decide. It just doesn't happen by itself. Jesus said, do you think I have come for peace? No, rather, I tell you, division. Well, a call to decision it's a call to division. For example, start the business or get a job. <laughs> Do one or the other. Stop living in limbo. Get married or move out. Stop living in limbo. Make a decision. 
And when you do get married, you say, I promise to be true to you, period. No qualifications, no exceptions, no conditions, no hanging on to an old girlfriend, no what-ifs. That's it. It's a decision. It's a decision for a new way of life, or what would we say, a, a lifestyle, that's divided from the past. There's a clean break from the past. Something new has begun. To prepare for heaven, going far beyond preparing for retirement, but for a real retirement in heaven, takes a decision. It takes a decision. It just doesn't happen by itself. And the, our model of that decision is Mary, the mother of our Lord. Tomorrow, the church celebrates the Feast of the Assumption. And when we celebrate, Mary said yes to the angel Gabriel. The angel came to her in her home in Nazareth and said that she'd be the mother of the Savior of the world. And she said yes. She made that decision. Her yes was to be the mother of the Savior of the world. But her yes also meant no to a traditional role in the village, getting married, raising a family, and doing those simple things that she had been taught. It meant no to that predictable, comfortable way of life. It meant yes to a new way of life, to be led by the Lord. Her decision that day in her home of Nazareth began to prepare her for heaven and open for us a way to prepare for heaven. And the way, of course, is Jesus Christ. On the Solemnity of the Assumption, tomorrow is a holy day. And we honor Mary, who made that decision, and in the end saw the victory when she was assumed body and soul into heaven by the Lord. A victory won by God, a victory promised to us who make that decision with Mary. The decision in itself to prepare for heaven is only the beginning, but it's absolutely necessary. Now recall the angel Gabriel said to Mary, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And like the angel Gabriel, I say to you today, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to make this decision. The Lord has made his decision for you. The Lord has decided to do whatever it takes to bring you to heaven. He was born in a stable among animals. He was a refugee. He was a manual laborer. He was rejected by the people, tried as a criminal, condemned, even though innocent, crucified and buried. He was thoroughly humiliated and put to death. But this Lord has done for you. He made his decision, and then he lived it. The Lord has made his decision to get you to heaven with him for eternity. So what is your decision? <laughs>